Hi, and welcome back to the Industry Expert Series on PCB Data Management. My name is John Watson. In this episode, we're going to be looking at reusable designs and how it's going to improve the PCB design and product development process. We are, we are working in, in trying to develop PCB designs in an industry that is, is demanding us to do it quicker. I've had a lot of conversations with executives and managers and VPs and their main comment or their main question for me has been, how can we get things quicker? How th can we get things faster? Well, a lot of times when you, we do things faster, what happens? It causes errors to be introduced into our design and our process, and that doesn't uh, solve the issue. What is, ha is happening is we're, f we're f being forced as designers to work faster and smarter with fewer mistakes. We do not have time any longer to do multiple spins of a design. We have to get it right the first time. And I have found that one of the best ways to do that is to use reusable blocks. So what exactly is a reusable block? It is a portion of either a schematic or PCB design that is managed and saved in a system such as Concord Pro or on your local system. It is a, a block that you're able to reuse in a design. Now, there's a lot of benefits to do this. One of the things is that the, re, the reuse of an already tested circuit. You don't have to redesign it. It's already been done and it's been verified. Number two is the benefit is that saving time in the design process that you're able to use the previous design and, and simply lay it down and, and use that. And what it does is it also encourages team designing together. And the ultimate result is what? Fewer mistakes. Quicker time, fewer mistakes. But there are some perceived problems with reusable blocks I've seen. I find that a lot of engineers, that sometimes they don't even want to use reusable blocks. And the reason is, is they feel as if they would like to test their design prowess and that they, they believe that it's a kind of a, a downplay on their abilities. No, well, it's not a question of design prowess. It's once again, it's about time and effort with the least amount of mistakes possible. Another perceived problem with uh, reusable blocks is they are going to be read only. And sometimes a designer looks at that and he thinks, I, I would like to make changes to that design, which is perfectly okay. But it, it, he needs to realize that that certain reusable block was designed in a specific way. And that if he's making changes, then what? It's being pulled out of that reusable block environment what he should do is take it and save it and then have another, and you can actually develop families of reusable blocks. Another problem is the difficulty of selecting a complete circuit. Uh, knowing exactly where you need to break a reusable block is, is a talent actually. And you need to limit the number of inputs and outputs that you include in that reusable block. Understand, the more inputs and outputs that you have, the harder it is to interface that with your new circuit. The, the other issue is, is that in that reusable box, there are possible obsolete components that may be in there. So how do reusable boxes designs improve then our design process? Number one, you're making fewer mistakes in your design because you're reusing that design. Also the flexibility. Any information that can be placed on those reusable blocks, we actually put onto our reusable blocks information about uh, components that we have, any of charts or test points or any information. And what happens is then that becomes sort of the tribal knowledge that is pushed forward. Every time that reusable block is used, that information comes with it. Reusable blocks simplifies the multi-channel designing process and it simplifies the structure of your schematic. When you use a reusable block, and especially with a multi-channel design, what? You, simple, you have a simpler schematic, which means you have a simpler design review process. Instead of reviewing eight pages of a schematic and eight different channels that are the same, all you have to do is just one. 
It helped also in getting through the compliance testing. Once a circuit has been verified and you've taken that through the compliance checks, that's a smart reuse. That is the ability to take something that's already been verified by a compliance facility such as UL and reuse that to where you don't have to repeat those processes. Reuse designs involves p your PCB data a lot better. It involves a lot more combination of your data. One of the big problems and one of the perceived issues was what? The, the possibility of obsolete parts on your, on your reuse block. When you use managed components in your reusable blocks, you actually then begin to control not just your components, but now you can begin to control and manage your reusable blocks. And you have a very sure confidence that they, can, they are in still usable and are in good state. Some of the key takeaways that I hope that you got from this episode was the common sense, it's common sense to use reusable blocks and designs. You've seen what a reusable block is, some of the benefits of using them, and how it can improve your development process. If you've enjoyed this episode, I would encourage you to share these with your, your colleagues and your, your friends. And, may, and please leave us your comments below and what you would like to see on future episodes. In the next episode of the series, we're actually going to be showing to you how can you make sure that the PCB design data is both accessible and secure. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been helpful for you. My name is John Watson. <music>